Hello, hello, and welcome once again to another edition of a Beatles podcast that we call Things We Said Today. This is a show that centers primarily on what's going on in the Beatles news-wise. I'm Ken Michaels, best known for the Beatles syndicated show, Every Little Thing, being joined by the Beatles newsman himself from Beatles Examiner, Steve Marinucci. Hi, everyone. Uh, what we're going to talk about on today's show is some new developments that will certainly um, give Brian Epstein, hopefully, uh, more credit, which he certainly deserves for all that he accomplished in his career and in being a manager for the Beatles and other artists. And that is that there's going to be a sculpture being made of Brian that's going to uh, be in Liverpool, hopefully, I don't know, fairly soon. It's in the works right now. And it's being done by a guy named Tom Murphy. And this is the same person who actually did a sculpture of John Lennon that was used at the John Lennon Airport, that's shown right now at the John Lennon Airport. And this is really, I, I, whenever I hear something like this, I'm really happy. Because Brian is someone that I feel doesn't really get the credit that he deserves. He's one of the, the many unsung heroes in the Beatles history. And uh, we need to get his name out there more often, especially to new Beatle fans that really don't know the full history of the Beatles. Tell me what you think about this particular development, Steve. Uh, obviously, I'm very pleased at this. This is something that uh, that Liverpool, I, I don't want to say really owes him, but I'm really glad they're doing this for him. They were already in the process of doing some other things. They renamed a theater in Liverpool in his honor. Hmm. And uh, there's uh, a couple of films in the works, which um, we're going to talk about. And it, it's about time that he got a little bit of recognition. There's been a movement for a long, long time to get him into the Hall of Fame and for some reason, Rock Hall of Fame, and for some reason, the Rock Hall has not honored him. And we were just going over the list of some of the non-performers in the Rock Hall of Fame, and there's really no excuse that he's not there. And mm. we could probably spend, you know, the whole hour talking about that, and we're not, I don't think we're going to, but just looking through some of the names that are in there, that, and he's not. I mean, Alan Freed is there, Frank Barcelona is there, Bill Graham is there, uh, Dick Clark is there, Don Kirshner is there. I mean... There's no reason for him not to be in there. There are a lot of non-performers that right. are in there. And I'm not saying these other people aren't worthy of getting in there, especially right. certain people who started record companies, a Barry Gordy, for example, or a key producer, or songwriters. They're all worthy of getting into the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is such a frustrating topic, <laughs> the yes. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There are a lot of artists that still haven't gotten in that deserve to, ahead of the ones that have already gone in. So, you know, and, and I've had this argument before about Ringo, who I feel should definitely, as a solo artist, get in there. But when you talk about Brian Epstein, it's very important to know the history of the Beatles and the fact that as talented as the Beatles were and, and are, you had to have people there around them to help make that phenomenon what it was. You have to have people in there on the business end to help the Beatles along as well as on the creative end and the Beatles were so lucky and I don't mean to take away anything away from their talent they were so lucky to find Brian when they did as well as George Martin those are two key players if you ever want to call anybody the fifth Beatle on a creative level you'd have to say George Martin to me anyway and on a business right. level you have to say Brian and I, I, I want to stress that this is not taking anything away from the Beatles' talent. You could be the most talented artist in the world, but if you don't have the right people to back you up, you can get absolutely nowhere. And for the Beatles to, to get to where they were, they had to find George Martin. We're so lucky that George Martin not only was so creative in what he did with the Beatles in terms of his arrangements and everything and and all that he contributed to the group creatively. But sometimes people forget that without him, they wouldn't have had the record contract. It was George Martin who took a chance on them. 
And in order to get to that level, they needed someone to bring the Beatles to George Martin. And that was Brian. Right. And, and the Beatles had to start somewhere. There was no question that they, they worked their way up through the ranks, you know, working in Hamburg, um, you know, battling all the other, uh, you know, the competition that they had. And there was a lot of competition in Liverpool. Mm-hmm. But they had to have, at some point, I don't think you can argue that they were, it would have happened no matter what. And I think you have to, you have to give a lot of credit to Brian. I mean, he wasn't their first, he wasn't the first person that worked with them in a, in a, an authority position. You know, Alan Williams, of course, did some work, but, but Brian was the one that really got it going. He really propelled them. You have to give Brian a lot of credit for simply yeah. believing in them. Right. And he did whatever he could to get the Beatles a record contract. And he did try, so we've heard, every record company in England, and they all turned down the Beatles, including EMI. Right. So, you know, the Beatles were very lucky that they tried a second time with EMI, and George Martin said yes. Uh, also... You know, he's also said this story as well. The Beatles had a very small contract with EMI. They didn't have to get paid all that much. So it wasn't like EMI was really sticking their necks out when it came to paying the Beatles anything. So there was this thought to George Martin, what have I got to lose here? But even still, he didn't have to sign the Beatles. No. So... You know, it's just one of those things that you appreciate a lot more as you get older and you understand history better. It's very easy to take a look at that catalog of what the Beatles did and be so astounded by it and say, God, what talent. But if you didn't have those components around them, who's to say if they ever would have become what they were? I think important, too, is the fact that not recognizing him makes it seem like his role is somewhat diminished. And this has gone on for so long now. There's been such an, a long-standing uh, argument about getting him into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that he kind of gets pushed out to the side. I mean, the Beatles are, are big on their own. They're, I mean, they're what they are. But you have to not forget that there were, there, there were other people involved, and Brian definitely had a major role hmm. in getting them to where they ended up. Right. And it's too bad. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that he, you know, that he died when he did, because it would have been interesting to see what would have happened after, uh, you know, after that time, you know, later than that time, you know, because they had, they did Magical Mystery Tour um, right after that. Would that have continued? Or would that have gone on? Would his time? influence been as strong as it once was? And that's the question that you have to ask. It's kind of interesting right. that you bring that up, because we just did a show about Paul McCartney's comments about Yoko Ono in the interview that David Frost just did with Paul. It was a one-hour show. And I really was fascinated by the fact that they brought up something that a lot of Beatle fans have talked about before. What would have happened had Brian lived? So David even posed that to Paul and said, you know, if Brian had lived, and if, if he didn't die when he did, would the Beatles have stayed together longer? And that's something that really he couldn't have answered. But, um, you know, for all that he brought to the Beatles, he had them wear the suits, he helped to get them more gigs, he got them more, more appearances on BBC Radio, and this was all happening as the Beatles were building momentum anyway, but still, you've got to give them so much credit. Right. I, I, I think that argument about whether they had stayed together longer is kind of, um, you'd have to wonder because I think things were kind of di disintegrating slightly when he passed away, and I don't think Brian could have stopped it. Hmm. Well, I agree maybe with you. Could, maybe, maybe he could have. Who knows? He was the type of person that um, that might have been able to. He was, as, you know, he was close to. He was so close to them. He might have been able to do it. Who knows? But I, I think the Beatles loved Brian and they trusted Brian, but on a creative level, he was having less and less of an influence. Mm -hmm. Which is not to say that he wasn't important anymore, but still, if you don't have all that early success, you wouldn't have had the, the success that followed. 
So you right. still have to give Brian all that credit for what happened in the beginning. Right. And when you think about it, it really is quite extraordinary that from the moment that he signed his contract with the Beatles to the time he, that the Beatles got their record contract, that was under a year. That was pretty fast. Yeah. He made it happen. I was going to say he, he made it happen, which he did. But again, they were very lucky that they stumbled upon George, George Martin. And there's so many reasons to be grateful for what George Martin did for the Beatles. But again, to get to point B, you need point A. Right. And Brian was point A. So I'm not going to say the Beatles and their success would never have happened without Brian and George Martin. But if if they were to be successful, it would have happened in such a different way. And who's to say that they ever would have had the impact that they were to have? So I think that we should be really grateful that Brian came along when, when he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But definitely the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing, there's no reason on this earth why he shouldn't be inducted. In fact, um, Martin Lewis, who many people know for being the MC at the Festival of Beatles fans, started some kind of a movement a few years ago trying to get him into the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And is that really like the only way you can validate somebody, Steve? Do they matter less if they're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? There are so many great artists that haven't made it so far. A lot of people seem to think so. I mean, the the whole the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing, since it's since it's out there and since it's become, for better or for worse, a symbol of how great you are um, in rock and roll. I mean, I you could you could argue that I suppose to the you know all day long, but it just doesn't seem there's any reason for him not to be in there, considering the the people. I read off that are in there. There's so many people that are in there, non-performers. Hmm. George Martin is George Martin is in there, right? And you have to wonder why he is not in there, and it it just it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense as to why Brian Epstein is not in there. No, he oh. definitely should be in there. If you have other people in there that are non-performers, and you have other people who managed other artists that were successful or started a record label. Right. You know, anybody like that, a Don Kirshner. If people like that are in there, there's no reason on earth why Brian should not be in there. Sam Phillips is in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he deserves and, to be. And he deserves to be. Nobody would sure. even argue that. Right. If Sam Phillips is in there, why couldn't Brian Epstein be in there? It doesn't make any sense. Right. And it's not as if they haven't had enough time to induct him. You know, if you can have, uh, you know, the Beatles and John, Paul and George individually and George Martin, although Ringo should be in there, you can certainly have you can certainly have Brian in there. He should be in there. No doubt about it. But another thing we should talk about is that there are two films in the works on Brian. Right. And as you had mentioned in your column in Beatles Examiner, one of them is actually being financed by Tom Hanks. Yeah, that was kind of uh, interesting uh, that uh, that that little thing happened. Uh, I think I'd heard that a long time ago, but this just came up recently that uh, that Hanks is is involved in in this other film, and it's there are two films in the works. There's the uh, one by uh, uh, Tiwari, which has been going on for a long time, it's called The Fifth Beetle. And it's going to be based on a graphic novel that he is writing. And then there's the, the Tom Hanks version with Benedict Cumberbatch as Brian Epstein, who I have to admit, I'm not real familiar with Sherlock, but I've seen ever since, since I wrote this thing, I've seen more of more things from Sherlock around. And that's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big deal that they got him. Hmm. Um, so that's interesting that, and it's, the two are going to be competing. You know, you, we don't know the timeline on whether, on when each of them will come out. It'd be funny if they both end up showing up about the same time. Also, the fifth Beatle project of the Vectuari thing has been going on for so long and they don't have a director. They don't have a star, whereas the Tom Hanks picture does. What was the so film that, that I heard about in the last few years where they said Jude Law was being picked? 
to play right. Ryan. There, there was a, there was there was actually that's a third project, but that is according to uh, Vivek Tiwari. When I interviewed him, I asked him about that whether his project had anything to do with that. He said no, and he said that project was gone. That project is no longer in the works. So, it's just interesting that several people at the same time are thinking about the same idea to do something for Brian. And then there's the and then there's the play that's going on. They'll be going in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I think it's opening. It's opening this month, I believe. But it's only uh, running for about a week. I thought it was a little longer than that, but uh, it's a two man it's a two man play with um, Andrew Lancel is playing Epstein, um, and he's a, a Liverpool actor. Mm -hmm. So, and it, that runs from November fifteenth to December first. So it runs a couple of weeks. Okay. And there's no, and there's no. I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up going somewhere else in 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 England. You know, maybe in London. Right. It'd be, be interesting if that okay. popped up somewhere else. Well, I actually have a quote here from your article on this, mm -hmm. from uh, Beatles promoter, one-time Beatles promoter Sam Leach, regarding uh, this attention that Brian's been getting especially the statue. He says, Brian fully deserves to have a statue honoring him. He took the Beatles to national and worldwide fame, and despite their obvious talent, they may not have made it without him. Without his urbane, dignified manner, Brian opened doors that had previously been slammed in their face. That's a quote there from Sam Leach. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad that Brian's getting all this attention. I, I am as well. I, I, it's, it's good to see this. It's very good to see it. Now, I, hopefully, this will lead to to some, maybe it'll, you know, eventually lead to the, the Hall of Fame thing. There is, by the way, you mentioned Martin Lewis. There is a website, a Brian Epstein website, that has information on him and on the on the move to you know, get it to get him to the Rock Hall of Fame. The uh, both of the the, the uh, Fifth Beatle movie has a website um, that just um, expanded a little bit, and so. Do you know the? The address for that? StuffFifthBeetle.com StuffFifthBeetle.com Okay. But anyway, that's where his... That's where the the Vivek Tiwari movie information is. And there's a bunch of articles there. Uh, a bunch of things there. Um, including um, pictures from the graphic novel. And, and uh, he told me that they would be adding to that in time. So... Okay. Well, before we end our show, we want to let everybody know that we have a contest going here. Our sure very do. our very first contest. Very first contest. So why don't you tell the folks about it? You can win a copy of Beatles Scrabble. The new Scrabble game on the Beatles. New, Scra new Scra Scrabble game on the Beatles. It's it's basically takes the old game and adds a couple of Beatle twists to it. It has some Beatle cards, um, and you can put Beatle words in the game. It's, it's a lot of fun. I've I played it, and it's, it's fun. And anyway, this is this is from the same company. They're called USAopoly, mm -hmm. and they put out the Beatles Monopoly game, and also the uh, Trivial Pursuit game. Mm -hmm. did that too. So the and way to win this very easy. Not we're not going to make you look up anything. Although you can look up all my columns if you want to. <laughs> plug plug. But, plug plug. But the way to do it is to send your name and uh, and address. To things we said today, radio show at gmail dot com. That's all you have to do. You just send us an email, and you have till the end of November, till November thirtieth, to get your name into us, and we'll draw. We'll pick a, a, a name, and um, please one name only. Don't send us a ton of emails with your name on it. Right. Um, and we'll pick a name, and and we'll contact you, and we'll send it off to you. And once again, our email address, which is brand new now, it's things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. And while you're entering this contest, why don't you send us some comments or suggestions about this show? And uh, let us know what you like about it or maybe some topics you'd like us to cover. Yeah, we're, we're always interested in topics. Uh, you know, we're trying to get, stay with newsy things, like, for example, with the Brian Epstein thing. And um, uh, we'd love to have 
know, your suggestions for topics and your comments. We'd love your comments. And we've heard several of them already, and they've been very encouraging, and thank you for those. Yes. And if you want to, you can check out our Facebook page, which is simply the name of the show, Things We Said Today. I have my own Facebook page, and so does Steve. And do. uh, not only that, but you can check out all the different examiner columns that Steve writes. It's not just the Beatles. He's got a laundry list that he'd love to read for you, but uh, he does yes. do an examiner column for three of the four Beatles, everyone except John, mm -hmm. and also a few other columns there. Yep. You might want to tell uh, folks about. I do vintage rock and roll, and I do um, TV on DVD, which is kind of a, a pet like of mine. Hmm. And if anyone wants to know more about my show, Every Little Thing, you can check out my own website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. And on the website, you'll find lots of interviews with people connected to the Beatles, as well as Beatles trivia posted every week with great prizes to boot. Kind of like the Beatles Scrabble game that we're giving away right here on Things We Said Today. So thanks so much for listening. I'm Ken Michaels being joined by Steve Marinucci. Bye, everybody. Again, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.